Hey everybody, it's Dr. Julie Quinn here, and I'm going to do an overview of Module 2 Precursors to the short story. So you should be able to have access to this once you have completed the orientation quiz, scoring at least a 90. So um, we know that you're up to date on the course and that you've taken your short story reading quiz so that um, you can demonstrate that you understand the basic concepts to the terms that we'll be using uh, in uh, the, the modules to come. So when you click on exercise, to one, it's just an overview text that just says this is these are the objectives of the module and some assignments at a glance. Complete the required readings, participate in the discussion board, then you have a project, which is a writing assignment and a quiz. So um, move on to um, 2.2, which is again an overview. These links and readings are going to reappear themselves. We're going to talk about book fables and creation myths. Note. The short story, if you click on this, this is something that you probably have already seen in the prior module. Um, and if not, it gives you a little bit of background um, on the content and ignore the screen that you see right here. That's just from a video that I created for you a minute ago. Okay, so after you get a glance on this page, what I would do if I were you is I would block off time on um, a day planner or a schedule so that you can read some of these creation myths and take notes and the same with the fables and take notes. In addition, um, we've got um, Plato's Allegory of the Cave, also called the Parable of the Cave, and um, you'll see a little bit of a video on that. So it's not just often hearing some of these or reading some of these texts, but you get an opportunity to hear some of the texts. So when we move on to um, the next page, Precursors and Creation Myths, you th there's a repeat from the prior link. It's not a new one. It's just that the link is embedded in different places in the module so that you don't miss it at all. I would print these out when you can, when it's not a video, and take notes. It will help you with your upcoming um, discussions and module project for sure. Okay, so as you click on some of these, for example, the introduction to creation myths, You'll see that it is just a short page, but what's nice about this is that you've got some, um, Professor Murtaugh has gotten some information in here um, where you've got particular terms that tend to appear in myths um, uh, defined and highlighted, and we've got plenty of different myths for you to explore. Okay, so that's the introduction to the creation myths. And then, of course, one of the very common ones from the King James Version of the Bible uh, in Genesis creation of the world. Um, and then as you click through on successive pages, you're going to see Greek, Norse, and Cherokee creation myths, and you can kind of compare them to um, this myth, which is more of a like a Levant Middle Eastern um, myth, considering its origins, right? So there's your reading for Gaia, Odin and Ymir, Corn of Medicine from the Cherokee tradition. Then you move on from the um, creation myths into a section of fables. We've got Aesop's fables, we have Jewish fables, we've got um, the, the allegory of the cave right here from Plato, which is in you know ancient Greek, um, and we have Shang Zhu's A Butterfly's Dream. So you've got um, hopefully a nice sampler platter of not all cultures. Um, we are limited in our time scope in this class, um, but we wanted um, students to see sort of a sampler platter of um, enough so you can get a sense of how fables are told in different places around the world in a sort of um, historical, not modern, but a historical context. And there's Butterfly's Dream right there. It's quite short. Obviously, you're not going to be reading in the original script, but we do have the translation uh, below. Okay, translation by uh, Burton Watson. As you move through these discussions, then you have the opportunity to write and share your own fable in the class discussion. And once you finish that, you have a quiz. And once you finish that quiz, um, based on those readings, and so again, that's where the readings I think are going to be really important to help you um, contextualize the ideas of, of the, the myths and the fables that are in this precursors module. 
You've got this assignment. Okay, it's the project. After completing the reading and activities in the module, it's time to sort of test your knowledge in a non-discussion, non-quiz kind of way. Um, let's see. Uh, the project will allow you to more deeply explore and demonstrate your understanding of key concepts from this section. You're given several choices, right? So you just choose one, two, or three of these. You can, depending on your strengths and weaknesses as an academic person, decide to do a little bit of research on Socrates, you know, his beliefs and practices, explain why Plato chose Socrates as the speaker for Parable of the Cave. I, and, and by the way, it, I call it the allegory of the cave. Um, so we'll use those terms interchangeably. Uh, how do Socrates' beliefs and practices relate to the themes um, of this parable? For example, what is the literal and symbolic significance of lightness and darkness? And so your project one essays on Plato's allegory of the cave. It's going to be about 750 to 1,000 words. Option two, you can actually create a presentation. Research the various interpretations of the parable, create a visual presentation. So you could use like Google Slides, you could use um, Prezi, um, PowerPoint. But remember, this is a literature class. And so as you create these slides, you've got to proofread them. So just FYI, uh, if you do that, um, explain your own interpretation of the themes and what lessons um, is the, uh, what lessons would your audience learn and your opinion. Um, you've got um, an opportunity there. I would record that presentation. You can submit it as a studio recording. So you can go over into the studio button, for example, and you can see all my little studio recordings here, and it's recording software that's built in. And by the way, you don't have to be on camera if you decide to do this presentation. You can just choose record, and you can record your screen. So if you were using those slides, we get those audio, we get the audio built in. It's much easier to use a studio um, for this assignment uh, than it is to um, uh, try to just upload PowerPoint depending on like the version you have with the audio included. So I'd recommend you using Studio. And if you have any questions on that, all you got to do is reach out and let me know. Okay, creative writing students, those English students who um, had the opportunity to talk about fables in the discussion, now you get to write your own parable that has setting characters and plot. This is probably a little bit more difficult even than options one and two, because I'll be looking for the shape of parable. Um, I'll be interested in the lesson that the reader needs to learn. Um, and again, it has the same length as option one. Okay, so that's the story choice if you choose um, Allegory of the Cave. Now, if you choose Book of Genesis and the King James Bible. So this is another option. You could do an essay presentation or creative writing. So you have some flexibility in content choice, depending on which text spoke to you a little bit more. I have no preference for which, which text you choose and which project option you have. Um, I get, a, I get the opportunity to learn a lot about how you understand myths and fables by doing this and allegories too. So, the grading rubric um, for the essay option, the content is 50 points. The mechanics, remember, you've taken English 111, 112, or the equivalent of before this class. So I'll be looking at that because if, if you don't proofread your work and if it doesn't, if it doesn't fit a collegiate academic standard, it's going to be hard to believe you. It's going to be hard to, uh, it's going to be hard for you to be persuasive. You're writing a persuasive essay that has a thesis. You're, you're making an argument about this is how a text should be read, or this is the hidden meaning, and so on and so forth, or this, this, this makes a functional parable or allegory, right? Um, and then um, MLA formatting for the essay option, uh, PowerPoint formatting, right? So if you, when you name a source, you still have to have an in-text citation even on slides. The creative writing options, content mechanics, and relevance right? How is there, is there a relationship between the creative text that, that you create? Um, uh, so whether you're writing a creation story or you're writing your own parable and how does it relate and connect the ideas from the module? This is showing deep relationships and critical thinking in any of these assignments um, that you choose for the project. You get to choose one text and one option. Okay, so you're not doing as much here as it may reflect.
Remember as well that um, module two is a one week module. So this is going to be coming up fairly quickly. It's worth 75 points. And I believe if we go into the course um, syllabus, I know I put it in, I know I put the information in here. So module two is May 23 through May 29. And um, your quiz and your project are due um, at the end of week two. Okay, so just keep that in mind. And if you have any questions whatsoever, reach out and talk to me. I'll be providing announcements with more um, resources towards your assignments um, as the week progresses.